what is Polyfusion? Cool. So well, I'm Yashvi from Polyfusion. Hassini is also here on the line. And Polyfusion itself started out in a way to just express ourselves. We found it to um, kind of put what we enjoy about dance and the community and put it out in further and share it with other people. So there's like dance workshops. We've been able to collaborate with different folks, um, not just artists, but also um, larger hosts. So we've done a couple of things with Club Mumbai. We've been able to work with different community organizations, um, put on events, um, make it a real community venture in that sense, right? So it goes beyond dance. We, we find dance as a platform to connect with different people. And then we decide that we wanna do something more, you know, there, there's always more. So we've uh, found it to be a little social community and it's been really nice. A anything to add, Hasini, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I think that, that pretty much sums it up, I think. Uh, just speaking on our goal a little bit, kind of why we created this community. Uh, we just wanted to make dance a bit more accessible than it was. Uh, we found communities, we found dance teams where, you know, like professional dancers were, they had the platform, uh, but not necessarily beginner dancers. So all our workshops, events and everything, they're catered to beginner dancers as well as experienced dance dancers, but we just want to be inclusive in that sense. So um yeah that's a bit about kind of why we created what we did so and then and you worked with um so i'll first i'll step into the before i do club mumbai you have worked with for artists i know you guys work with love um so love you guys performed with him right yeah for canada so, this year yeah. canada that's right so how, how did that kind of happen um well, we performed at Diwali Fest last year, uh, both in Surrey and Vancouver. So Love was the number after our team. Um, and then he just like, he found, he saw our group and then he invited us to come on the stage and dance with everyone while he sings. So that was where the connection was formed. Um, and then I think he needed two dancers on stage for Canada Day and then Yeshvi and I were available and it was good exposure and a good experience to be yeah. on stage with a live uh, singer. So yeah, that's how that happened. And between yes. then, we did work with Love um, for the Surrey Eagles game. So that was like an opportunity to celebrate South Asian culture and um, be a part of the Surrey Eagles game here on the home ground. That was back in December or November. But again, an opportunity that we got to share with our community further and invite other folks to come watch a game, you know, watch a hockey game that they wouldn't have potentially, but you know, in any other way. So, um, you know, and also dance here and there in between when they played music. So, so cool. that was another cool. thing. So that's so one reason artists would reach out to you. And I, I'm always constantly talking about the collaboration within the South Asian scene. Partly why, like, I started doing these things online was like, it would like break down the walls of people who don't know each other. So one reason artists would reach out to you would be on level one, if their musical brand fits your musical brand, collaborating with you live show. Like what a great way um, to collab uh, and bring dancers on and then double elevate the brands. Like you guys get so much more exposure about what you do. Their show becomes like a lot more entertaining and interesting to watch because uh, most of us are not great dancers. <laughs> so, um, I'm like not bad. Love's probably the better dancer that I am. Um, okay, so that's what you did with Love. And then what did you do with Club Mumbai? Like, because that was kind of an artist kind of like live mix too. So how, what was that uh, partnership? Yeah. yeah, we started last summer um, with dance classes and we had a lot of fun just dancing even after the class was over. So we kind of took that to another level. Um, Hasini had already been to Club Mumbai and there was like a previous connection there. So we kind of just um, cultivated it further and decided to work with them in the sense that, you know, we want to dance, we want a safe, comfortable environment to dance in. And this is, this is potentially just a small, you know, select, but like South Asian women here in the Lower Mainland, it's sometimes harder to get out. Um, and another thing was my first Club Mumbai night was that night. So I never got the opportunity, never had a group to really go to the event with because it was a Thursday night. And then it's also like, you know, two or three, it's fine. But we went with 40 people that first night. So Crazy. it was it was pretty awesome. And then after that, I think Club Mumbai has really helped with um, like just hearing our ideas. They're always open to, uh, you know, 
in, in a way we enhance each other, like, as you said, with different collaborations. So um, we enjoy our time there and then they enjoy, um, you know, putting on such great events. So uh, for that reason, I think we continued that relationship and then there were other ideas. So we had a really cool artist showcase recently where it was before the club started, you know, we invited folks to come on and take the stage because we, um, Hasini and I have gotten the opportunity to be on that stage. And then it's like, how do you make that stage better? You, you can't, I think the best way to make it better is to make it bigger. So we, we took that further and kind of opened up the stage. So the first, first time you guys went, you just went to perform and like dance with a big group of friends. And then the second time you were like, hey, can we maybe have actual artists perform before the DJs kind of start? Yeah, in between then we did host some nights here and there. Mm -hmm. So if after the very first host night, we uh, went further and we would, uh, we had a really cool event at Club Mumbai where we um, did like a dance along, uh, you know, kind of like a Zumba dance fitness mm. session, but you take it to the club. So we found this really cool program um, and we were introduced to this instructor from India, actually. So it's called Bali Beats. And we do a bit of like Bali Beats and dance choreography when we teach our workshops and classes. So those are the two different types of workshops and classes we put on, um, just, just for reference. Um, and then with that, we were like, you know, a studio isn't the only place. And we've learned that the beach is an amazing place. So why not yeah. take it to the club? So we would get up on stage, you know, just before the party started, before, you know, people were really getting um, into the, the dance. So to just get the party started, we had a couple of songs that we would teach choreography to, and it'd be follow along and very dancey, not so fitnessy. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, it was pretty fun. We did a couple of nights like that. And then, and then we came up with the idea to kind of host our own show. So is, and now the artist showcase is something that you guys are doing once a month or like, was that just a one-off? Cause I think they, Tubbs, I think was saying they're going to keep doing it now, or is that, was it your yeah. idea that they're going to keep going? I, like how does, what's going on with it, it now? It just worked out that like we both enjoyed it so much, like from both ends. So the first one coincidentally, you know, January is just a time of, actually we tried to do it in November, December, but it was too short notice. So then we floated it to January. Mm -hmm. uh, we were a little uncertain if that would fly, you know, an idea like this, especially here where we don't see that so often in January, mm -hmm. where it's like, things are dead, you know, everyone's hibernating. So we're like, we took a gamble, but it actually fell um, on our six month anniversary. So then July was our one year anniversary. And so I think celebrating who we are, what we do, and then including and, and, and being inclusive in that sense is, is why this event might uh, definitely will continue every six months. Yeah. So we're looking at January and July. Sweet. So there, it looks like they're maybe going to curate a couple between then, and then you guys would come in and curate one where you guys would also be one of the artists and performers, but then you would curate probably like the acts for that day or whatever. So people, and then did you, was it all singers or was it singers and dancers that you guys booked? We had both. Um, so one of the objectives was that we would provide the stage for beginner artists, artists who may have never performed before. And we mm. know speakers can be really intimidating for, you know, first time performers. So this was that stage. Yeah. And we would, you know, have friends and family. It was a ticketed event. Uh, so it's it's a comfortable environment where, you know, you don't have to be afraid of, you know, negative comments or anything like that. So we would open it up to, you know, any kind of artist that can mm -hmm. display their skills on the stage. Uh, so we had, um, being a dance company, we had a lot of dancers um, as well as singers. Awesome. And singers would come Done. and, you know, um, kick off their first or their original songs on stage. And that was really special, too. And we would have a large diversity of artists. And our first showcase, um, we had two drag queens, South Asian uh, drag queens come on stage. And they mentioned that it was their first time outside of Davy Street performing in front of a, you know, an mm -hmm. open audience. And um, it was big for them. And yeah. so we try to try as much as we can to provide the platform for a diverse set of artists. Yeah. No, I love it. So this is, so then to like, so for artists coming into your world, like they would reach out, one, if they're an artist that wants to become a better dancer, they would just take your course. Cause a lot of artists that are singers do like so many of the male um, singers that are in the South Asian world, like Mickey Singh, uh, he's such a great dancer and a great singer. Um, there's always artists that 
like to add dance into there. And obviously there's um, female singers like Raja Kumari, who's a great dancer and a great artist. So I think that's somewhere that uh, artists would liaison with you. Not that they have to, like, uh, not every singer can dance, but if it's, if it's something that they want to incorporate into their brand. The second would be to, to collab performance-wise if there's someone that's more established that is doing a show that you could be a part of. But then what's cool now is that you've also opened the door for artists that are brand new to be like, you know, I might not be at a level that I can work with you, but now you are going, oh, I could work with you the other way and I could put you on our stage. So there's actually three different reasons that artists would collab or reach out to you, which was so great. And then um, the fourth way is what I did. And this would be, uh, again, if you're a, if artists, if you're applying for a grant, I like put just a grant idea together about making sure I showcased like South Asian artists in more mainstream lights. So songs that aren't necessarily in Hindi or in Punjabi can still have um, South Asian leads. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you guys are in my video. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, and so they were shooting a video. So in my grant, I explained that I didn't know you to them, but I knew I was going to have to cast a South Asian lead this month as it and it was just great that we like met at uh diwali too right i think it was diwali as well so that worked out perfect but going forward like if someone wanted to write a grant they would again get reach out to you guys be like i want to have a grant where these two um women are like my lead dancers mm -hmm. uh so that's all how i think how you guys would play into like the artist grants live music which is why this is such a great date just opened on the 16th so the live music grant is for these kind of things where you're putting on shows and it's the one that i tried to tell tubs about so now i'm kind of thinking because your live show is so tied to club mumbai um and they need help for sure capacity wise so it might even be smart that like you guys write a grant on as one or you write it as bali fusion and they give you like a letter to be like yeah we're going to give them the venue and the time or whatever but i think together you guys have a really strong application so the way that live music works is they never want to fund the idea the first time but also with most career development grants they don't want to f fund your first release they want you to have a couple songs out and then they're you know on the way and so live music is the same way they want to see that you've done it a few times and then it's like hey here's what we did the first time here's the numbers here's the business model here's the turnout here's the promo video like here's everything that we did the first time we did it here's the second time we did it here's what we learned here's what uh we wanted this is what we did differently this is what worked that right now we're not we're asking you for funding for our third one or our fourth one right so they that's why you guys have a strong application because you've done it a few times and if you uh so if you kind of like make sure you have all your footage and you get a letter and and you know from one of the artists and one of the dance crews that about that stuff then i think you guys have a really strong application for live i have a question then yeah. um so for Bog fusion um so we're eligible just for this live music grant um that's question one or are there other any other grants that we're eligible for and then secondly we can under that grant we can only apply for like events we put up such as the showcase or are there any kind of other occasions we can apply for or does it have to be an event? So yeah, so live music is obviously specifically about live music events. That's what that grant is for. Okay. Um, there's another grant that's called Music Industry Initiatives, which is like so cool because before you even do a full grant application, which is going to take you about 40 hours, Music Industry Initiatives is so cool because the initial step is just a one pager where it's like, here's my idea for something I want to do in the music industry. And then they do the one pager and a phone call. And if it doesn't qualify, they just go, no, that, that's not part of our funding. And you don't waste 40 hours doing a whole grant. Uh, and if they're down and they love the idea, I think Brenda handles that one. Then Brenda's like, yes, I read your one pager. Let's talk about it for 10 minutes. And if she likes everything that she hears, and she obviously has like a bunch of rules that change every year. So if that matches what they're funding that year, then she'll be like, okay, good. You actually have a shot at this. Now go in and put in like the 40 hours to get this done. If I can ask, right? Cause this would be like music videos. Um, like there's music videos and then there's dance videos. Is there anything that would align for that? Yo, what I think where a dance video would play and I, this is what it hurts me on Instagram. Like every time 
um, dancers post reels, a lot of them try to like um, play off of what's trending. And what's kind of sad is sometimes you see the same choreography in the same trending video uh, like a hundred times and you're like, okay, so if you're going to do that once a week or once a month or whatever, like why, why not also supplement that with people like, my whole thing that I keep advocating for, which is collaborating with people who are in your own city. So I feel like there's a huge, like, the, there's a huge gap, I think, for dancers using, like, local artist music on IG Reels. I think there's some, there's, I don't know, again, how I would put that grant together, but that's definitely one. And then the music video grant, um, yeah, I guess what people don't understand is, half the music video grants the artists don't do them because we're also slammed so half the music video grants that artists get the directors or the producers put those grants together because that's their vision for the video you know we want to start in this video for this track that you have could we do the grant with you and then you would write a music video grant which is also part of careers um with that artist so that would be like a collab between whoever the lead like um in that case you would be considered the producer like if you're putting that video together with that artist mm -hmm. um so those are the two so so something like that's like an instagram real idea with something like innovative it's like kind of like not in a music video or a live show but it's in between that would fall under industry initiatives and then yeah if it was something like there was like a, a straight up dance music video then you would just do that as a collab between you and the, the artist of the song that you want to be in so then how long do these like i know there's a period for op that it's open for um mm -hmm. how long do grants take to process and for you to actually get the funding to do an event yeah it's always this year for next year right so the reason they do the grants around now is because they assuming that you're planning for like summer of next year for live music because that's when most of the live events are so mm -hmm. i think it's january or february that they tell you that you got it and like all of those events and like even if it's an artist applying for a music or whatever it is they're also assuming like i said you're gonna do it anyway mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. they're, they're just you're just gonna like that that's, they're not funding you to do something it's like I keep trying to explain to people it's not like yeah. they won't get your fire going so it's like you're gonna do this event like we're gonna do this event on our one year anniversary july anyway like this is happening anyway mm -hmm. if we get this much more funding like that's when we could do it for free instead of ticketed we could pay everyone this much instead of this much so then you're not waiting to start to plan your event you're planning your event anyway mm -hmm. and then if you get the money bam it makes that it just changes the way that you guys execute I think I saw this on the website and you could remind me if there's more detail, but about previous applications and previous um, grant recipients. So is there more information on what exactly they submitted, how they submitted it, if, if that information is out there? So that's the cool thing about that is you can just go look up those guys and girls' Instagrams mm -hmm. and be like, hey, what is it that you guys got funding for? And I was thinking, so this is government funding and then um there's probably private grants as well um is this the best place to start for someone who's just starting out like we haven't applied before what's the difference and like you know yeah we're super new to this world of grants so creative vc website they have like a newsletter right so does music bc mm. so in their newsletter they send out they will also like put the grants that aren't theirs so they'll even mention like if someone else is, is funding a grant, the two, but yeah, again, then usually you're up against a lot more people. Creative BC, you're only against other people in BC. So that's why I think it's the, it's the best one to focus on. And then when you get it, you can also leverage it against other grants. Like Factor is a federal government grant. They also have a newsletter. As a content creator, um, StoryHive, which is TELUS, they also have an email list. Uh, so there's another one, like if you guys want to do like a cool dance video with like a local artist, they, they have a grant for that. That's really cool to hear. Cool. Yeah, thank well, you. yeah, I think you guys have so much potential, man. I'm really like proud of what you guys are doing. So I, I think you guys could put in a really solid application. Perfect. We will do that. Sweet. <laughs>